Income and its growth is another major determinant of food demand. And there is a well-recognized change in food demand as incomes increase. This graph shows food demand on the horizontal axis and per capita income on the horizontal axis. And you can see income levels of $1,000 here, very low at the bottom of the axis. And then as we move up to $50,000 per capita income, we see differences in food demand. At the $1,000 level, we see that most of the food calories, and, and this axis is stated in food calories, takes the, the place of starchy staples. Starchy staples, in general, are carbohydrates. And relatively less of that are in other things with oil and fats, meat and seafood, making much less portion of that, that calorie demand. As we move up, starchy staples go down, but we get more and more of our calories from oils and fats, meats and seafoods, and dairy and, and eggs. Again, we see a shift away from starchy vegetables to meats. Total calories increase, but more and more of them are coming from animal-based items than vegetable-based items. And that continues until we reach sort of a saturation point here at $50,000 in this graph. And then we've reached this level of starchy staples, and everything sort of remains constant after we've reached a certain income level. But here is the major point, and there are two. One is we, as we increase income from low levels, our calorie demands increase. And second, more and more of that comes from animal-based. Now, animal-based calories put more of a demand on the land base than vegetable-based or crop-based because the animal has to eat calories to maintain itself. So if I get one calorie from a animal or meat, many, many more, usually to the, at least to the ratio of 5 to 1 of and of land-based calories are needed to get that one calorie of meat demand. So as we increase meat demand, we greatly increase the need for crop production. Again, because animals eat feeds which are produced on, on, on fields. All right. I'm going to show you here where income levels are in a couple of countries. And this data comes from GDP per capita, and it comes from the World Bank. Here we have United States and France, and this data is from 2001. And we see that the most recent value or the, of GDP per person is $70,000 for United States and $44,000 for France. Both of these are developed countries. Their GDP per capita is increasing over time. But there's little change in overall food demand because we have reached that saturation point. Here is China, India, and Nigeria. And these would be developing countries. China's income is 12,000. India's is 2,000. And Nigeria is 2,000. Both. China and India incomes, or GDP per person, are increasing rather dramatically, and this increases food demand. Nigeria, in another large country and a developing country, has a more checkered past as far as GDP growth. As long as this increases, because they're at low levels, we see those countries at this part of the graph, and as they increase incomes, they will tend to eat more meat and require more calories. Here in the United States and France, we're going to be relatively stable. 
So as we look at projections going out into the future, that income growth is going to change what we eat. And you can see that more and more of that proportion is going to project it to come from dairy and meat. And again, that is going to put more demands on crop production to feed those animals.